Well, that's two down. Uh, I guess there's only just one more up. Never. Hey friends, I'm Pragmatic and I to talk about video games. And the game I want to talk about today is Onimusha 3, which also brings us to part 3 in Oni Month. So this game was the final game in the trilogy, and it brought a lot of weird decisions to the game's overall development. Some good, some okay. So let's get into it. Onimusha 3 Demon Siege was released in April of 2004, marking almost two years after the last installment. This gave the team a lot of time to play around with the game's overall design. Speaking of which, look at this intro. This is absolutely gorgeous for a game on the PS2. I think this intro can nearly hold up to later gen console games. Okay, let's talk about this guy for a second. Unless you played the spin-off fighting game, Onimusha Blade Warriors, you have no idea who this is. We meet again, Samanosuke. Still, you can establish a lot in just the opening alone. Time has passed, our lead character falls back to Samanosuke, and now he's able to enter that form Jubei is able to enter. Pretty big intro for someone who has no relevance in this game. This intro sets you up for a wild ride, because not only are you going to be playing as Sam Minosuke, you're going to be playing as famous French actor Jean Reno! Uh, hey, what should we do about the new uh, Onimusha game? Uh, I don't know, put that there, uh, Jean Reno in it. The kids really love Jean Reno. All jokes aside, I kind of love Jean Reno's character, Jacques. They do enough with his character that doesn't make him feel too out of place. Well, as out of place as a Frenchman could be in a Japanese-oriented game. Our story starts a few years after Jubei's battle with Nobunaga. Despite Jubei's victory, Nobunaga has regained power. Does this sound familiar? Samonosuke leads one final assault on Nobunaga's stronghold, Hinoji Temple. Right away, we can assess some initial changes to the format. The game keeps its widened out camera, but instead of keeping it fixed, slowly follows the player to let them cover more area visually. I would say this is an improvement, as a fixed camera system never really feels all that great. Entering Nobunaga's keep and making quick work of his pupil Ranmaru, the final battle is interrupted by an unknown force. This occurrence flings Samonosuke into the future, where my evil is raw. In the most Terminator-esque way, Samonosuke appears in Paris, France, 2004. He finds that the Ginma are here as well, wreaking havoc on the city. This also debuts our newest hero, Jacques. Before any formalities can be exchanged, the same occurrence sends Jacques to Samonosuke's time a few days before his assault on Hinoji Temple. Ah, Philippe! Ça va? Pourquoi? Pourquoi? Maintenant? J'aurais voulu avoir ma femme et ma fille à mes côtés pour mes derniers instants. Manque de chance, je me retrouve dans tes bras. But no, he is dead. It's here that Jacques is given his own power from the Oni. Bestowing him with his own gauntlet, he is given the task of assisting Samonosuke in his attack on the temple and seeing through to the end. Ten days from now, Samonosuke Akechi, who was chosen by the Oni clan, just as you were, will challenge the Genma Lord Nobunaga Oda in a battle at Hanoji Temple. But Samonosuke cannot win alone. He teams up with the Samonosuke of the past to put an end to Nobunaga and the Samonosuke of the future attempts to stop the Ginma's assault in France. This essentially has you playing two roles. 
Jacques, who has whip-based weapons, and future Semenosuke, who gains entirely new weapons while getting his old weapons back. Why did they just call this Samurai Jack the video game? Oh, they actually made that. <laughs> I don't know why they went with this past-future scenario, but they do craft it in such a way that it doesn't really get too confusing. While I can't say if this is the best decision for the story, I can't really deny that it works, and playing as two roles really helps to keep the game fresh, from Samonosuke's new and old weapons to Jacques' new playstyle. His fighting style is a bit more long-range, and his techniques are a bit more focused on grappling and throwing to add a bit of difference, having a whip also made for some interesting platforming. Jacques can whip onto these things to get to different areas of the level. I like how smooth he feels, and he's a pretty cool character altogether. Oh my god! While they don't have the same friendship system as Onomusha 2, this game does well with developing characters and relationships. Samonosuke and Jacques go from being acquaintances to close partners. The only other playable characters are Jacques' girlfriend Michelle, who's a total powerhouse, and Aihachi Honda, a foe turned friend who has some of the strongest development of all. <laughs> That's that. Hey! Huh? Hey, Hachi, you. <laughs> I thought he was with the Genma. Weird. Of course, I can't forget to mention Akko, the little Tengu fairy girl that accompanies Samonosuke and Jacques. She serves as the time bridge between the characters usually switching between the past and the present to change control of each character. She also serves to collect items for you, find hidden treasures, and can even change outfits to provide stat bonuses to your characters. She has a variety of buffs, but once you get her second outfit, the white vest that provides self-healing, that's pretty much all you need. Future Samonosuke teams up with Michelle and her stepson Henri to stop the threat plaguing the future. I like this Samonosuke's new array of weapons, but definitely not as much as the old weapons though you do get a hammer similar to the one and two, so that's awesome. And now Samonosuke has the ability to enter the Oni form. Remember all that stuff I said in the last video about how Jubei displayed a different set of power by being an Oni descendant? Forget it! Samonosuke can do it too, and so can Jacques. Ugh. This time around they did think to let the player activate the ability as opposed to it automatically happening whenever you collect five orbs. Good job! I do generally like this game, but I feel that there are a few pieces that are kind of... off. I think having a camera that moved with you was a fantastic decision. Fixed cameras are never really a good go-to, and in the case of Onomusha 2, I think that's the best you can do with that type of camera. This was another step forward in my opinion. Going with this was a good choice. Beyond that, there were a lot of missteps. Like, I feel I argue with myself about whether I like how this game feels or not. It feels smooth, but it doesn't quite feel as satisfying. Hitting an enemy doesn't feel as good and solid as they did in Onimusha 2. I can't really place what it is about the game either, but it doesn't seem to just hit right. It's mostly with the new weapons. The light blades you get for future Samonosuke at the beginning of the game seem like they're supposed to mimic the Thunder Blade, but instead of deep impactful hits, they just look and feel like he's hitting through the enemy rather than directly impacting them. The Air Blade has a satisfying special ability, but it feels a little heavier than the blade should be. They got the Lava Axe right though, I love that thing so much. I don't know if others feel the same way about how I feel about these weapons, but it's something I notice every time I play this game. I don't quite feel it with Jacques as much. His grappling ability and throwing ability feel spot on to me. His whole playstyle in general feels really nice, if not maybe a little more difficult. As far as story goes, I actually really like it. More than Onimusha 1, but less than Onimusha 2. I can't really say I find a lot of the places you travel to memorable in this game, but that happens when you go from place to place and don't have a central hub like in Onimusha 1. I can make a whole video about why I live Onimusha 1's Gifu Castle. You do go to some pretty cool places like Notre Dame and the Eiffel Tower, but you're not there for very long, and there's not even a whole lot to explore, and it's kind of that way for a lot of the locations. The other big thing is that I felt this game was trying to do more than it was really able to handle. This game was a little later in the PS2's lifespan, and this being the third game in the series, they were really trying to push for better things, and in a lot of ways they were successful. Like there's this cool part where you find the souls of the Oni trapped in this orb, and once you obtain it, the whole Oni army starts to fight with you, and it's probably the most memorable part of the game. It's just cool to see so many characters on screen joining you in this epic battle. 
but I do also feel that it was a little much for the game to handle at times. Whether by it stretching a bit too far out camera-wise, or if the game experienced a bit of lag with all the commotion going on screen, I think this game would benefit the most from a remaster. Adding later console power would really give this game the boost it needs. You hear me, Capcom? I'm trying to give you money! Also, remake Godhand! One final complaint is that sometimes your character can change direction to another target a bit too easily. I experienced this so many times. Seeing me stringing together combos just to turn around and start swinging at somebody else really just takes away the satisfaction. It wasn't something I experienced too much with the other games, and I can't say why this game had such a problem with it. Despite this, Onimusha 3 is a pretty solid game and a worthy send-off to the trilogy. Characters are deep and engaging. Gameplay took a small dip, but nothing that will take away the pleasure of a good slice up The soundtrack is as phenomenal as ever, adding more cinematic scores while still retaining those Japanese-oriented roots. And, uh, Guildenstern's back. <laughs> I made a good point to avoid talking about the game's endings in hopes that people would want to pick these games up and play them on their own accord. But I have to talk about the ending to this game. I just have to. So if you want to avoid some spoilers, skip to here. Go ahead. I'll wait. How was your day? Did you have a good lunch? Ooh, that sounds good. Alright, that's enough time. On the day of the attack, Samonosuke's fight against Nobunaga proves unsuccessful, and he is killed in battle. With Jacques back in his time, all hope seems lost for this moment. That is until future Samonosuke comes back. Me again. You. I'm sorry, me again? That's your comeback line after he just killed you? Also, what is going through Nobunaga's mind? Did I just kill Samonosuke and then another Samonosuke showed up using with the dead Samonosuke to make double Samonosuke? Man, this ending is so weird, but I absolutely love it, and the epic final battle is something you just have to experience for yourself. I poured my heart out about these games. Each one is worthy of your time, and while fundamentally remaining the same, each one possesses unique aspects. The simplicity of the first game, the improvements and fleshed out development of the second game, and the outlandish over-the-top action of the third game will give you an experience that I sincerely hope you will enjoy. Thank you for watching, and thank you for joining me for Oni Month. Now get out there and save the world! Well, mostly Japan. And France had a little... France... yeah. Just get out there, I need a nap. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I had a blast playing through these games again to bring you Oni Month. Sorry the last two were a little late, but I hope you enjoyed them all together. Consider sharing and subscribing if you enjoyed the content. Also follow me on Twitter if you'd like, and leave a like for me. As always, have a great day and keep it practical. I'll see you next Oni Month.